Hi, I'm Don Donaldson with the Goleta Valley Chamber of Commerce. This is the Information Policy Roundtable that is held every month. And what we do with the Chamber is we try to bring in to interesting community activities that are going on, especially with respect to what's happening with the government, budgets, and in particular the business community. I know redevelopment's on the minds of a lot of us, and uh, four of us were up in um, Sacramento on Monday. But I'm going to leave that part of the program to Rita to talk about. But I, I do want to talk about generally our budget situation. And while our city is not in <coughs> terrible shape, we're not facing a disaster situation, but we have crimped for the last couple of years, and we're likely to have to pinch some more for two more years. And last year we, we did cut uh, a detective, so we pulled back on law enforcement, which is always a hard thing to do. And, um, and, and we're looking at the sheriff's contract, but we don't know what it's going to be like in this coming year. Uh, we know that the um, sheriff's uh, negotiated uh, salary increases, and all that will be done <coughs> back to us as we start negotiating a new contract with the sheriff. So law enforcement is always the biggest part of any uh, city budget, and um, we're going to have to look at that very carefully, what the impacts may be. Uh, one thing that I believe we can say is now complete is the general plan, and this is something that has been worked on for all the years that uh, the city's been in existence, and has been contentious along the way, including with some of you in this room. Uh, but now I believe we have it packaged. We don't have the final imprimatur on our housing element yet. That's the one thing that the state has to seal off on. Um, well, they don't have to seal off on it, but it helps if they do. So, uh, but we hope that will be done. And so then the next step after that is putting in place a zoning code. And the zoning code is basically, we've got the general plan, which is a broad outline of how we want to develop. The zoning code lays out the particulars. Another one that I'm concerned about is um, overnight parking for people who are living in their vehicles. And again, um, there's um, a group in Santa Barbara that, uh, that monitors this situation for a number of sites in the city of Santa Barbara and also in the county where people who are essentially are homeless but living in their vehicles can park overnight so that they can park safely um, they are monitored, this, um, uh, this, this organization uh, maintains contact with them, helps connect them with services they may need, may help them with finding employment. But it's, it's a way of allowing people, particularly people with families who are living in their vehicles, they don't have to park on the street and expect to be moved on by the police in the middle of the night. And, uh, my uh, brief presentation today to you is a little bit about uh, the city's redevelopment agency and some of the projects that we have undertaken here in the community. And also I wanted to share with you a uh, recent uh, proposal from Governor Brown. San Jose Creek removes the flood threat from Old Town. Businesses that are in a flood zone are required to have flood insurance. And as you know, when you have flood insurance and you're in a flood zone, when you go to apply for loans, um, there's an issue. Let's also talk about some of the other things the uh, city's redevelopment agency has done. Um, we built an affordable housing project, workforce housing, uh, Samina Gardens. Uh, how many of you have heard about Samina Gardens? This is great news. We're very pleased with Samina Gardens. This is a project that received financial assistance from the redevelopment agency to happen. And let me tell you what happened. Many of you remember what was there before. It was the Samina Nursery. The taxes that were paid at that time by the Samina Gardens Nursery, Samina Nursery, I'm sorry, was about 9300 bucks a year. Okay? After the redevelopment agency went in and prepared a financial package with the support of the agency and the council, it got approved and that project got built. The assessed valuation took the property taxes generated from that site from $9,300 a year to over $500,000 a year. That's 
resources and revenues coming directly into the city to be spent and invested here locally. That's a pretty big chunk of money in today's economy. Um, we've also helped people who live in existing homes. Um, 37 homeowners here in the city of Goleta have received assistance in the form of grants to <coughs> conduct repairs to their home that they weren't able to afford. These are folks who don't have enough money to fix the roof, to repair the water heater, to correct unsafe conditions, code violations. 37 of those uh, homeowners here in the city of Goleta have received assistance from the agency. Real, do you think the state's threat against RDAs is, or is it a negotiating point to get something else out of you? <coughs> well, that's especially a $5,000 question. Um, you know, we both uh, came away, um, we heard the word uh, compromise. <coughs> Um, we've heard uh, the importance of RDAs. Um, it's hard to determine right now, because the cannons pointed at redevelopment agencies, where, where the ultimate goal is. Uh, last year, you know, the state rated redevelopment agencies to the tune of a billion dollars, two billion over two years. Uh, Prop 22 passed, said, hey, stop doing that. So it's a little bit difficult. There's also a constitutional issue. No way the lawsuits, I think. So, I don't have a clear answer for you because I don't know perhaps me in there. If you saw something that I did, be happy to uh, share that too. Was uh, I hope that the, one of the randomly picked city redevelopment agencies to be just to be analyzed wasn't like the city of Bell or something like that. No, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think it was the city of Bell, but there were maybe some other examples that you wouldn't be comfortable. Yeah, that's right. You know, the, the other thing is that this one can happen very fast. Yeah, sure. we really get things on the ballot. I think it's the middle of March. March 16th. Yeah. Wow. So, this is not something where we can just sort of sit back and talk it to that. Just, just, a, just a quick factoid. The governor's budget, which we've had opportunity to analyze and review internally, uh, assumes the continuation of five tax measures, which will be also be on the ballot for renewal. And some have really raised serious questions about whether those will be continued and approved by the voters. So if they don't get approved, <coughs> you need, you'll need a bigger shovel to dig the hole you know, that, that the state's trying to get out of. The public is invited to attend, and you can find out more about our activities through the Goleta Valley Chamber website. And if you Google it, I'm sure it'll come up right up on the top. And there's a, a, a list of our various events, and the Information Policy Roundtable is uh, one of them that's listed.